I feel like I'm being pulled just looking at it. Now this is the kind of game that really helped in my decision to start making video game reviews. After seeing endless praise about Shinji Mikami's newest game and getting vastly positive reviews, I had to check it out. People say I can be pessimistic about upcoming games and film, but with this one, I think it's more logical in recent years to go in with lowered expectations. Shinji Mikami was one of Capcom's leading developers responsible for many classics such as Devil May Cry, Dino Crisis, Beautiful Joe, Resident Evil 1 through 4, and the Phoenix Wright series. He's an unsung hero in my eyes, having created many of the greatest franchises that have come out of Capcom in the past three generations. Now with his own studio, Tango Gameworks, all eyes were on him to produce even more greatness. Unfortunately, this is not that game, and it's a shame because I really believed in this one. To call the story simple would imply there was one. You're a gruff cop and you're called out to a psych ward for unclear reasons. Then you're attacked by a guy with a chainsaw before the city flushes itself. Suddenly, you're in the woods, and before you know it, you're wandering around random buildings looking for any understanding of what the hell is going on. It feels like set pieces held together by nothing more than duct tape. It should come as no surprise, but there's no character development outside of in-game journals and notes. The main character, whose name still eludes me, his story feels like it was glossed over and forgotten. He's a detective, because the job comes with a gun and a partner. It plays no real part in the overall theme of the game, because there's nothing below the surface. The pacing is just plain awful. One minute, you're sneaking up and planting a knife in a, let's say, zombie's head, and the next minute, you're trying to communicate with one of them. Hey, are you guys from around here? I don't know where... <laughs> the narrative wanders around for the first eight chapters and doesn't get interesting until way after the second half. Traveling through this mental breakdown doesn't hold any real substance because we don't care about anyone in this game. Unlike Silent Hill 2 or Psychonauts, there's nothing to learn by going through our characters' minds. It's just one action segment leading into the next lackluster fight. It's like the game throws all the best elements of Miyakami's prior games at you and hopes anything, something will stick, but they forgot to add any kind of explanation or purpose. It's like walls drip crimson because scary. These enemies are infected by something. There's sometimes phantoms, sometimes demons, sometimes ogres, straight out of Lord of the Rings. Sure, they're enemies, but I have no idea why any of this is happening. But man, this game sure is bloody, and that's what scares audiences, right? It does show moments of brilliance, however, and its cutscenes can be scary. The problem is those moments are few and far between. There's really not enough to justify the 20 hours worth of gameplay here. It's a shame too, because there's some great ideas on display here, but none of it matters. The game is constantly wasting your time. In order to upgrade your character, you have to wait till you find a mirror. It takes 10 seconds to go into the mirror, then you walk to your cell door, another five seconds to open that one, you run down a hallway, you open another five second door, Then you sit in a chair and wait for that animation to finish, then you can finally make your selections. Then, it shows you how much simpler it could have been because they place you right next to a mirror to exit. This may seem like a small thing, but it really adds up. Like for example, I can appreciate a challenge. 
but all my deaths felt entirely unfair. So say you're searching an area for 10 minutes, looking for enemies, and then suddenly, bam, you hit a trip line. I hope you enjoyed playing that last 20 minutes because that was a one hit kill. So now it's time to go back and pick up all those jars again, take out all those enemies, and smash all those boxes yet again. Just some real bad decisions, like ammo being given out so scarcely. I had to go back to easy mode just to get through this game. The game creates atmosphere, but then breaks the mood with these awful decisions. It's all build up and then no climax. Then you remember that none of it even matters because you have no personal interest in your character anyways. You're playing a blank slate and a story that sounds like it was written by a 12 year old. It's trying to go for this tongue in cheek delivery and I'm sure it's trying to play into its biohazard roots, but its execution and tone is way off. Valerio, it's me. The good doctor is here. This is my brother, Valerio. Let's say his original doctor. Peel away. Yes, expose everything. Hey, what are you doing? The audio is boring, lacking intimidation or any kind of fearful ambiance. It's a mixture of bad industrial noises, repetitive grunts, and splashes of Claire de Lune as if it were a cheap perfume. There's nothing I can say about the soundtrack other than it's half-hearted at best. I removed my headphones after only a couple of chapters because I could tell it wasn't getting any better. You'd hope the functionality would at least be decent, but even the gameplay isn't any better. The stealth tries so hard to be the last of us, but fails to understand stealth. It really breaks the mood when the game destroys any atmosphere with its shoddy design. You can sneak up on people that are looking right at you. You wonder how this all works when your character runs right by the bomb that will only blow up if you're standing up near it. The game glitches out constantly. There are some things that work. I had little problem with the inventory system and the way you can build bolts for a pretty wicked crossbow is interesting. There's several different bolts with multiple effects like explosions and freezing and flashbangs. It provides a nice bit of diversity to the generic shotgun and handgun, even if you use those more than the crossbow. And finally, the art design. I know some people were complaining about the super widescreen image, but I can honestly say I didn't really even notice it. Other than not being able to see the ground below me, which is especially annoying considering the game puts bear traps everywhere. The artistic look of this game is fine, but it just doesn't wow me, and I don't see the level of care I expected from these guys. For a game that shows its hand from the start, you'd at least expect that we're pocketing a king. If you want to run through a crazy person's mind, well here it is. You'll be fighting the same cookie cutter bad guys over and over again. No need to think there'll be anything more, because I can assure you, this is what you get. The Evil Within is a game that will leave you more frustrated than scared. It looks like the next huge fear franchise, but falls flat on its face throughout the whole experience. The idea of going through someone's mind could have been such an amazing experience if it were done right. Unfortunately, they failed to conceive a clear enough vision as we traveled through this mediocre tunnel of blood-soaked death. I hope you've enjoyed my weekly review show. If you want more Trevor Talks, why don't you subscribe by hopping on the bandwagon? I'm Trevor Anderson, and I'll see you next week.